was one of my most anticipated films of this year. I'm a fan of the franchise and its kind of over-the-top, creative and at times comical nature. 2013's Evil Dead, while a bit more serious in tone, was and still is one of my favorite horror movies, so I had high hopes for this one. But after finally seeing it, I have to say, maybe I had a little too high of hopes for it. I know I may get blasted in the comments for this, but today we're going to take a look at why I'm a little torn when it comes to Evil Dead Rise. So I'll start by saying my expectations for this movie were to see some demented ass shit and to have a pretty fun time. Both of those expectations were met, and in this film they were met really quickly. The movie cold opens with one of the best opening title card scenes I think I've ever seen, especially in a horror movie. It's both gruesome and beautiful at the same time, which I know only some of you will understand, but basically only less than two minutes in, me and my brothers were instantly hooked, purely from this opening scene alone. The whole gruesomely beautiful point is something you just get familiar with quickly in this movie because you're seeing a lot of messed up shit, yet it's all beautifully shot and choreographed. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say this is one of the best looking horror movies I've seen in a long time, and definitely probably the best looking in the Evil Dead franchise altogether. Now diehard fans of the first and second movie, don't trash me too hard, this movie just seriously looks great. Director Lee Cronin and cinematographer Dave Garbett, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, did a phenomenal job with this movie. The bathtub scene was amazing, and then there's this peephole hallway scene that I thought was really well shot. The visual and practical effects were awesome especially the elevator scene towards the end of the movie. Those who've seen it, you know what I'm talking about, and those who haven't seen it, trust me, you'll know what I'm talking about when it happens. The entire atmosphere of this movie is dark and tense throughout, but ooh boy, none of this would have worked if it weren't for the new and already classic horror icon that we get in this movie. Now I wasn't really expecting to come out of this movie thinking the performances were going to be the standout feature, but sheesh, Alyssa Sutherland killed it in this role as the latest deadite. I think out of all of the Evil Dead deadites, hers is by far the creepiest, and this has a lot to do with the makeup and vocal effects, sure, but it has more to do with her performance. She was wonderful in this, and some of the most disturbing moments were just her walking or holding facial expressions. Going back to the hallway peephole scene that I mentioned before, just her even staring through the hole with that smile was damn near scarier than the massacre she just committed outside of it. Truly masterful stuff here by this team. Everyone is great in the movie, however. Lily Sullivan was great and an awesome final girl. It was really cool to see her kick some ass in this. And even though younger and child actors usually can be a little sketchy in movies, they all did a wonderful job here, especially the little Nell Fisher. Not even sure how her parents signed off on this shit, but she was perfect for the role. Now, while I do have a lot of praise for the movie, I do think it fails in a lot of areas. Going into this movie, I wasn't expecting some Quentin Tarantino level story writing, but I was expecting at least an interesting narrative, but the story is pretty much non-existent here. Sadly, the movie starts off on a high note, sets up some characters, and then just turns its focus solely on the bloodbath. Now I know many horror films or the ones that are especially going to see this movie, that's kind of what you're looking for. And if we're talking about the Evil Dead movies in general, the story in all of their films throughout the franchise has kind of been the weakest aspect of these movies. The 2013 Evil Dead at least did have a pretty compelling storyline, even giving a reason as to why they were at the cabin that they were at, and they even tied it into the main character's arc, kind of giving us a reason as to why all of this is happening. I do think utilizing a family dynamic in this movie 
does help, especially one that focuses on a mother and her children. But largely, that's kind of all we know about these characters. They just simply exist. We don't really make any real connections with them. So while you do feel bad for everything that's going on, and trust me, you're going to feel like shit after you leave this movie. The stakes could have felt maybe a little bit higher. And now I usually don't say this, but a movie like this could have probably benefited from maybe five to ten more minutes of character building. But that's not even the biggest issue I have with the story. My main issue is the amount of dumb shit that the characters do. Now, a lot happens just to move the plot along in this movie, not because it even remotely makes sense, and that's an issue. For example, the film really generates steam after a huge earthquake. The kids come back from getting pizza, discover the earthquake created this damn near crater-like hole in their parking garage to their apartment, and the oldest brother decides to just go Ferdinand Magellan that shit. Like, wouldn't you be scared or want to make sure your sisters or mom are cool first? Maybe even think it's not safe to go in there or just simply just want to be back inside your house after something like this happens. Shit, maybe even check on the pizza that fell out of the car. I don't know, but I could see if it was the youngest sibling, but his old ass should have known damn better. The movie never really establishes this type of humor or nonsensical element either, so I can't fully give it the benefit of the doubt like I would in say the first or second movies because those seem pretty self-aware and you know we see this often too in movies like Cabin in the Woods or something along those lines where you kind of expect that out of the characters. This movie, however, feels very serious. So for the characters to kind of be this silly and dumb just feels a little out of place. I also think there's a lot of moments where the characters mention things or point out certain objects that are going to be used or happen later, and it just makes for a lot of very, very predictable moments. It just felt like instead of crafting creative dialogue or more subtle visual cues, the film was just like, yeah, we're going to tell you guys, get ready for it. And honestly, I really don't have that big of a problem with it, but it just feels really noticeable in this type of a movie. Also, now I'm going around hearing that a lot of people are saying that this is the most violent and disgusting Evil Dead yet, and I just really didn't feel that. I honestly was a little bit disappointed with the violence. I know that sounds kind of crazy. There were some scenes that I wish committed a bit harder to the bit. For example, the scene with the tattoo needle or the infamous cheese grater scene. You've probably heard about these. While cool, tense, and innovative, they didn't really hit how I thought they were going to hit. I may be in the minority here, but I honestly thought 2013's Evil Dead was better in both story and in terms of the violence. However, this film takes the cake when it comes to visuals and the performances. So as you can see, I'm just a little bit torn. Now with all of this said, this was still one of the most fun times I've had in the theater in a very, very long time. It's still a violent and bloody mess, which I'm sure is exactly what many of you who are going to watch this want to see. And you're definitely going to get that, paired with some really good acting and cinematography. It does have a countless number of flaws, but the good here does outweigh the bad, as there's more positive moments than there are negatives. And those moments, trust me, are worth the price of admission alone. I appreciated all of the work that went into this movie. Movie. And most importantly, we had a blast watching it. So I know I started this video off by saying I'm a little bit torn, and I mean I kind of am, but I guess a better way to say it is, is I thought this was a really good movie, however, I don't know if I liked it maybe as much as some of you did. So for that, I give Evil Dead Rise a 7.1 out of 10. 
However, I'm really curious to hear what you guys thought about this movie. Did you like it maybe more than I did? And I don't want to get it twisted. I did like this movie. However, I do think it is a bit flawed. Um, I think 2013's version maybe overall might still be a little bit better. However, I want to know what you guys think. What did you think about 2013's version in comparison to this? Where does this movie rank amongst all of the Evil Dead franchises? Number one or number two still your favorite? I want to know all about it. Let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate you guys for taking your time, as always, to watch this video. If you're new here, click that subscribe button. Help your boy out. I'm on my way to 3K, hoping to keep bumping those numbers up. Um, but anyway, I really appreciate you guys. Be safe out there, and I'll catch you soon.